Today I'm going to be talking about happy feelings that actually trigger more than bad feelings. Someone asked a question about how to deal with happy feelings being harder to deal with than bad or negative feelings and what we can do. So I want to talk a little bit about a thing called self-sabotage. You've probably heard this term thrown around, maybe you've heard it in therapy, maybe you've heard it on psych blogs, maybe you've just heard it in everyday conversation. Self-sabotage is sabotage of the self. Self-sabotage often happens when someone is dealing with something new and good and because they don't know how to deal with that, they self-sabotage. They do something to stop those good things from happening. They do something to ruin good things for themselves. Or when things are going really well, they throw a wrench into everything. And those are just some, you know, very, very broad examples of self-sabotage, but that's sort of what the term means when you break it down. Self-sabotage happens because sometimes good things are new things. And if you are someone who's dealt with more bad in your life than good, Dealing with good is not familiar. Familiar is always more comfortable. It feels better. So if we are familiar with bad things, negative things, crisis, drama, trauma, then that's what we're used to. And that becomes comfortable in a way. Even if we don't like it, even if we don't want a life full of bad things, we've become comfortable with it. So then when you start incorporating good things or good things start happening and you're doing really well and life is getting better and better, it's like you're living this life that you're not familiar with. It doesn't feel like your own. It doesn't feel like yours because it's just too new. So because familiar is better, we're not very apt to leave our comfort zones. And that's true for a lot of things. We don't really necessarily wake up saying, yes, I'm going to go outside of my comfort zone today. That's just not something that normally happens because you feel vulnerable. You feel different. You feel unsure. You're kind of embarking upon the unknown, and that can be scary. So even when happiness and great, good, wonderful things are what is part of the unknown to you, it's still unknown, and it's still scary because you don't know how to deal with it, you don't know what to make of it, and you don't know what to expect. So one of the things you can do is ease into good things. Instead of pulling back and immersing yourself in the bad again, in the negative again, just ease yourself into the good things. That way you're not bringing more bad upon yourself and you're not incorporating more bad into your life, but you're still letting in the good. And then as you become more comfortable and more comfortable with all those good things and all those good feelings, then you can just incorporate more of them into your life or be more open to them and they won't feel as new and strange as they keep happening. Another thing we need to talk about is the concept of being deserving of happiness. This is something that is sort of wrapped up in this triggering feeling or this not knowing how to deal with good feelings. Sometimes at the core we just feel that we are less deserving of happiness than other people are. And it's a really hard thing to break away from, especially if you have struggled with low self-confidence, uh, poor self-esteem, and maybe issues that have to do with comparing yourself to other people or feeling like you deserve punishment in some way. We're all deserving of happiness. We all deserve that. And just because your life has been a certain way and someone else's life has been another way doesn't mean that you are not both entitled to happiness, that you both don't deserve happiness. Sometimes happiness is triggering because we just don't know what to do with it. It's a foreign concept in so many ways. So when we think about happiness and good things and good feelings being foreign to us, it makes a lot more sense that they would be triggering or that they would feel strange. But with anything else, practice makes perfect. So the more you allow good things to enter into your life, the more open you are to those things. And the less you let those things trigger you, the more accustomed to good feelings and happiness you will be it will just start to permeate your life and you'll feel like a happy person. Sometimes when good feelings come in before we realize they're happening or really good things start happening to us and we're feeling happy, we kind of ask ourselves those immediate questions like, is this allowed? Is this okay? Because we're not used to it. We're just not used to feeling those feelings. So sort of the first reaction that happens is always this, 
Am I allowed to feel this way? Is this all right? Can I do this? Am I really allowed to feel this happy? Because it almost feels wrong because we are used to a life that's either so hard or full of so much effort um, or, you know, we've been trying to escape or been trying to hide or we've been trying to heal. And all of those things are very draining, even if they're necessary for whatever life has thrown at you. But I'm going to tell you right now, the answers to those questions are yes. This is allowed. Yes, this is okay. You're allowed to feel happy. It's okay to feel this happy. If you need to ease yourself into it, great. Do it. Because happiness is something that we all deserve. No matter what we've done in our lives, no matter how we struggle, no matter how we have treated ourselves in the past, we all deserve happiness. Another lesson is don't get too wrapped up in the causation. You don't have to worry about the causes, what's making you happy, because happy can exist without cause. Happy can exist without certain circumstances. You can choose to be happy. Whether good things are happening in your day or not, you can choose to be happy. You don't have to have a life of wealth and a million friends and tons of support and beautiful clothes and a great car and a fantastic job. You don't have to have everything all in a row perfect and wonderful and fantastic to feel happy. You can have a life that might look to someone else as being devoid of a lot of things and still choose to be happy. Happiness comes from within, not from without, not from all of the external things that surround us. So when you start thinking of happiness as a feeling and not a reaction to things that are happening to you so much, it feels a little bit more plausible and it feels a little bit more like something we are able to do and we're able to feel without being triggered. You don't just get happy. Let it come in. Let it flow on in. Let that happiness in. Don't be afraid of it. <music> happiness might be a foreign concept now. Happy feelings might feel awkward, might feel different, might feel new. But that's okay. Just go with it. Enjoy the ride. Don't set yourself up for failure. Don't be your own worst enemy. I did a video recently called The Role of Joy, and I was talking about the role of joy in recovery in general, in my own recovery, and I just talked a little bit about how joy really helps me to help other people. But when you take all the personal stuff about me out of it, the role of joy is a very important factor in life in general, even forgetting recovery and healing from mental health issues or personal pains. Joy itself can't be triggering. Joyous feelings can't be triggering. Something else is going on, and a little bit of what that something else is is that self-sabotage concept. So as soon as you start feeling a little bit unsure about the happy feelings you're experiencing, as soon as you feel yourself getting triggered, see if you can take a step back and just kind of look at the situation as a third party. Pretend that you're a third person viewing the situation, looking at yourself as though you're in a movie. Assess what's going on. Look at yourself really hard and try to be as self-aware as you can be. And it gets easier the more that you do this. And you'll be able to pick up on things that you can't tell when you're within your own body, when you're within your own mind, and you're just processing moment to moment everything that's going on. Sometimes you can do this third party, third eye kind of approach after something has happened, after you've been triggered by something. After something is already over and done, you can then replay it in your head, but not picturing yourself as you in the situation, but maybe as a third person would see the situation if they were watching it. And see what you can pick up on. It's just worth noting. There aren't, you know, magical little things that can be done to stop triggering thoughts from happening all in one immediate moment. Have a great week, everyone. See you next time.